you're 17. You're not supposed to have your life together yet. But I was like, no, no, everybody that I, that I work with has their life together. And they're like, yeah, but they're in their thirties. <laughs> it's just like, I, I totally lost focus of that. Did you foresee anime culture being what it is now when you first no, started? No, no, I had no, I had no idea. Like, I mean, I, I came in like, a semi anime fan like I, I saw the ones the anime that everybody has seen like fruits basket or on like I saw those but I wasn't like a deep anime fan um I'd seen like the ones that play on the tv like after school like Naruto and stuff like that but I I didn't like start from episode one and I'm like so devoted I have to see everything but um I I liked some of it and so when I got into it and I started like, especially when I started going to cons, seeing how devoted these people are, like, like, especially the people that have seen like fairy tale and one piece, I'm like, that's a commitment. <laughs> um, I mean, and how, how much it means to them is really something special and it's really cool. I had no idea. No. As far as like your interactions so far with fans, uh, anything that particularly sticks out to you? Any stories you'd like to share? I mean, there there have been some interactions that have just gutted me. I mean, like like in in the best of ways, where people come up and say like, I watched this show when I was going through a really difficult part of my life. Like for example, there was this one girl who was going through a really abusive relationship. And she watched this show and it, it just brightened her day whenever she watched it. You get emotional with these people and like you're hugging them and they're crying. And it's just like, I never could have thought that I, that something that I did would make such an impact. It's, it's mind boggling. Like, cause you know, if you, if you do like a desk job, you don't get to have that incredible satisfaction of like seeing the impact that you make you, you don't you don't get to do that but here at cons and stuff you get to meet these people and see like yes you did have this kind of consequence in these people's lives it's huge it's it's it holds so much weight to them and that's that's magical it's magical. As we stated before, you got started at a really young age, mm -hmm. uh, about 17, yes. I think. <laughs> Talk a little bit about that. It's so funny. Um, <laughs> I So yeah, I started when I was 17. I was still in high school, um, which was crazy in itself, having to work with the school to where I was able to go and work. Um, what I did was I as a senior, I had a, like a free period at the end of the day. And so I managed to work with the school to where I had that next to my lunch hour. And so I would rush to the studio and like eat on the way. And then I would work for a couple of hours. And then I'd have to rush back to school to go back to school. And it was just madness, but it, it let me work. And so I did what I had to do to do what I loved. And so, uh, yeah, it, it ended up working out. And it was so funny. I was telling the story actually to someone today um, that when I first started, I went in and I signed the contract and we got started and everything. And I told my mom that I was like, I'm an official employee. I signed the contract and I got to work and stuff. And she was like, you signed a contract. What are you talking about? And I was like, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm an official employee now. And she's like, Bryn, that contract is void. You're 17. You can't sign something for yourself. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, so she had to go in the next time I had a session and be like, hi, I have to like sign for her because she can't sign for herself. For my first few cons, she had to go with me because I couldn't go by myself. So yeah, my mom was a big supporter of like everything that I did. And I'm so grateful for her that she was supportive because I know a lot of people, a lot of families aren't. And so I'm really blessed that my family was. What about your peers at that time? Like, did they start to realize what you were doing? Like, how was they that? They did. Um, it, it was hard. Um, I had to deal with a lot of, like, people being, that I'd never really talked to being like, oh, I want to be your best friend now. Like, oh, by the way, can I go to work with you? And I'm like, no. And then they're like, oh, okay. And then they didn't want to be best friends anymore. And it, it's stuff like that. And um, another thing about like 
looking at your peers is over time, I started looking at the people that I worked with as my peers, but that kind of weighed on me in like a toxic mentality because like that meant that at 17, I thought my peers were a bunch of 30 year olds. And so I was like looking at myself and I'm like, I'm not able to support myself yet. What's wrong with me? I'm, I, I'm not able to like have an apartment and be able to pay all my bills. And like, I really looked at myself as a failure and it was really, really bad. And like my mom and my family had to keep reminding me, they were like, you're 17. You're not supposed to have your life together yet. But I was like, no, no, everybody that I, that I work with has their life together. And they're like, yeah, but they're in their thirties. <laughs> it's just like, I, I totally lost focus of that, but I'm in a better place now where I'm like, okay, yeah, there is a little bit of a shift there. And so, and now I am able to support myself all through acting, which is incredible. Not a lot of people are able to do that. And so I feel really, really blessed with that. Um, but yeah, it, it took me a little while to kind of get a better scope of that. <laughs> well, so if you could go back mm -hmm. and give advice to a younger version of yourself that was just getting started, what would you say? Mm -hmm. Um, appreciate the moments that you might look at as silly or that you might look at as having no value. Like for example, um, I didn't go to prom. I went to a con because I was like, oh, I want to make money. And like stuff like that, like it's silly, but I'm like, oh, I, I didn't go to prom. I didn't, I didn't have like all of these little experiences and I didn't, uh, I didn't have a lot of like friends and stuff in high school. Cause I was like, I'm working. I, I, I'm not going to go out and like hang out with people because I'm working or like, uh, I just focused on schoolwork and my job. And I didn't, I, and now even I don't have a lot of friends because I didn't keep up with those connections. And so I would say, nurture the things that you might see as not worthwhile because in the long run they are going to be so much more valuable than you think they are and so now here i am where my life really is just my job and i i'm trying to change that and trying to build more relationships with people because i didn't nurture that when i should have so so that having been said, like, you know, you've, you've talked about, like, just in this conversation, some significant challenges you've had throughout this process. Mm -hmm. What was it that that kept you tethered and gave you like a kind of piece to the process? Was there anything in particular that you kind of my family, yeah. my family, 100 percent, 100 percent. I rely on them so heavily and um, they could not be more supportive, more encouraging more loving and caring and they really are my rock they really are so that's awesome well speaking of families let's talk about the newest family that you just joined the spy family oh <laughs> that was just for one episode um it was really cool though um it was it was a neat experience um i've now gotten to voice match twice for spy family which I, which was mind boggling. Um, yeah, I, now they're like, I might as well go voice match Lloyd. <laughs> like they they always joke about that. They're like, next is Lloyd to voice match. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, now I've voice matched for uh, Fiona Frost, which is played by Lindsay Seidel, and I've voice matched Anya, which is p played by Megan Shipman. Um, for Lindsay, she unfortunately got sick with laryngitis. And so I stepped in for an episode and which was actually Fiona's biggest episode, which was a little unfortunate. <laughs> um, and that was that was tricky. Uh, voice matching for Fiona was really tricky, um, especially because we had so little to go on for Fiona already. Um, Lindsay had only been in once and she, she laid very little groundwork because she had only spoken like maybe 15 cues. And so there wasn't a lot for me to be like, okay, this is the voice. I kind of had to like figure it out for myself. Um, luckily that wasn't the situation with Anya. We had a lot to pull from for Anya for like a voice match. 
Um, and I felt a lot more comfortable voice matching that one. Um, it's a lot more in my wheelhouse for as far as voice voices go. So that was a lot easier. But um, for for Anya, Megan was on maternity leave, which was so incredible. I'm so happy for her. It's so, so amazing. Um, but yeah, uh, that was really fun as well. I love the character and it was really cool to be able to play it. <laughs> awesome. So uh, I want to ask you, so you mm -hmm. actually kind of have a, a broad range that you went through. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but singing, musical theater, theater in general, now voice acting. Is this your final form? <laughs> um, I've actually been playing around a little bit with streaming. Um, so yeah, um, if you want to follow me on Twitch, it's Brincessa. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's, it's the thing that's hardest for me is the technical side. Um, it's, it's easy enough for me to get in front of a camera and play a game and be like, ah, big personality and stuff like that. That's easy. Um, I got a lot of training for that back when, um, we did the direct to DVD dubs and we did commentaries over episodes. Uh, a lot of our training was like, there can't be any dead air. You have to have like something talking at all times. And so I got a lot of training for that uh, by doing that. And it really lends itself to streaming. But the technical side, I am not tech savvy in the slightest. And so it's a big learning curve for me and I'm really struggling. But um, luckily, I am currently dating a engineer up at Crunchyroll, and so he really gets the technical side. And so <laughs> I'm like, please help me. <laughs> and he's, he's really helping me out to figure out all of the nuances and everything like that. So hopefully we will get back to doing that and it'll be beautiful and everything will fall into place. But So, so a timeline for that, do you have any rough idea of when you think you want to start back? <gasps> Uh, well, um, unfortunately, <laughs> I had a little bit of an incident during the freeze. Um, I, the people above me I had a pipe break and I was gone all day at the studio on the day that it happened. And so when I got back, my bathroom was just completely flooded and it like seeped in through the walls on, into the other rooms on the, either side of it. And one of the rooms happened to be my little studio. And so they had to rip up the carpet and take out all the padding. And so I had to move all my furniture out. And so right now I have like a bookcase and a piano and my desk and my computer and all of that just in the middle of my living room. And so it might be a little bit because they had it happen in two other buildings as well. And they're still working on fixing those. So it's up in the air for when they'll get all of that fixed and when I'll get, I'll be able to move all of my furniture back in and get everything up and running again. But um, hopefully, as soon as I am able to do that, I, I really would like to get back into doing that because it's been a long time since I streamed and I feel really guilty about it because I still get people following me every day. And I'm like, you guys are doing your part. I need to do my part and stream, so. Well, keep us, Post it. <laughs> okay, I will. Um, well, I have one question I definitely want to ask you. Okay. And is there anything here that we didn't talk about or that I didn't ask you that you'd really like to talk about? Something you'd like to share with your fans or that you know you feel passionate about? Maybe even something that maybe people don't necessarily know about you. I really want to emphasize like one thing that I said earlier on like where I've kind of made my life my job. And I think so many people fall into that trap and just finding little things to give yourself, to give yourself a gift of encouraging your passions outside of work. It's so important and like reaching out to people and nurturing connections. It's so important. And because you're going to find yourself in a hole one day and you're going to be like, how the heck did I get here? And 
I'm really struggling with that right now. And I'm working on building those connections and working on finding the things that bring me joy outside of my work, because I don't want all of my work. I, I don't want all of my joy to be focused on something that is out of my hands. Like we call it feast or famine because we're always auditioning. We never really have the job. There could be a season where I don't work at all. And then I would look at myself as a failure and I would have no joy. I would have no joy in my life. My life would be like stagnant at a standstill because my life is my work. And if I had a season where I didn't work, then what do I have? So I'm finding the little things that are me, that, that I really enjoy, that spark interest in my life, that are outside of my career. And I think that's so important for everybody to have at least something, just one thing, and to have a really good unit, a, a good safety net of people that they can turn to and that really support them and give them love and just can be there for them and that they can do the same for in return. Thank you for watching Anime Diet. Be sure to smash that like and subscribe button for more tasty treats.